Hey guys. So, uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for uh, all the views I've gotten on my channel. And uh, I've gotten 3,000 subscribers now. I'm over 3,000, actually. You guys seem to like a lot of what I did down at the Meekum Auction. That's cool. But now we're back on this engine. So, uh, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to start saying that because everybody else does, so I might as well too. <clears throat> All right, guys. I'm going to show you something real quick that you can do. I'm, I'm going to make two videos here, so make sure, be sure and watch the second one too. But I'm going to show you something real quick that you can do, that you need to do, before you completely assemble your engine to save yourself a lot of heartache in the future, okay? I've heard a lot of guys and seen a lot of guys that put an engine together and they put it in the car and they put the distributor in it and they time it and it won't start and they don't know why. There's something wrong with it. Okay, so here's something that you need to always check. I don't care what motor you're building. You need to always check this before, unless, well, there, there, there could be one exception. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you need to always check this, especially if you're putting a lot of new parts on your motor, before you completely assemble your engine. Let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? All right. So, when I, took, when I took this engine apart, this is the timing cover that I took off of this engine, okay? So this is the factory timing cover. And I also had the factory harmonic balancer. But, I wanted to get a brand new harmonic balancer because I didn't want to have to worry about one that had slipped. So I got a brand new harmonic balancer for Bo, and I also got a chrome timing cover for him to dress his engine up a little bit. The important thing to do before you assemble your engine, there, well, before you put the cylinder heads on your engine, you want to put your number one cylinder at top dead center. And on a Mopar and, and Chevys, it's this one. On Fords, it's this one. And I showed you guys before how these cylinders are offset. Well, Ford, they, they offset their cylinders the other way. So this one's further up. That's why their number one's over here, okay? You always want to, and, and with, with, the, with the heads off the engine and no valve train in it, top dead center, it doesn't matter where top dead center is at. If it's on, you don't have to worry about, well, it's on, is it on the uh, compression stroke or the exhaust stroke? It doesn't matter because nothing's in here. What matters is what stroke it's on is the camshaft, not the pistons. The piston, every single rotation comes up to top dead center. Every single rotation that the, pit, that the crankshaft rotates, this rotates as well, the harmonic balancer. So what I recommend you do, especially if you're putting new parts on your engine, because it can be different. You want to get your number one piston to top dead center, and then you want to you want to put your timing cover on here just temporarily with a couple bolts. Put your timing tab on, whatever, and then you want to slide your harmonic balancer on the crankshaft just enough to get it on the key that's on the crankshaft, and you want to check your timing mark. Now, see, this is this is a top dead center. There's your timing mark. I'm right on the zero, so that's where I want to be. If you don't do this, and for some reason you've got the wrong harmonic balancer. You've got the wrong timing tab. And Chevrolet, over the years, they switched their timing uh, marks, timing tab, to where it was in the center of the, of the timing cover on the, on, the newer, on the newer engines. The older ones were like this. But since I bought a new balancer and a new timing cover and tab, I assembled this with top dead center on number one. I assembled this first to verify that when this piston is a top dead center, my mark is at zero. Because if it weren't, then I would either have the wrong timing cover and tab, well, not the wrong timing cover, I'd have the wrong tab, or I'd have the wrong balancer. And, you know, if you, if you buy a balancer that's made to put your number one mark up here because it's a newer engine, and I use that balancer on this engine right now, this mark would be up here. So you always want to double check, and not only that, Harmonic balancers, the way they work is this right in here, in the middle here, that's a piece of rubber, okay? So it's metal here, then there's rubber, and then there, oh, I'm sorry, it's, I'm sorry, it's out here. This is rubber out here, in between. This is metal, this is rubber, this is metal. So as your engine rotates, and it fires the pistons in, one by one, there, it, it, it sets up vibrations in your motor, okay? This, that's why this is called a harmonic balancer, because it, it absorbs this rubber ring 
absorbs the vibrations caused by your engine and makes it run smoother. But over time, that rubber ring can separate, and I've seen it before on older harmonic balancers where you put it on here and your timing mark, even though it's the correct balancer, your timing mark's up here or down there or out of the way because it's, it's actually rotated on the rubber because it'll, over time, they'll come loose, okay? So you want to make sure that you do this. And I was going to say, like I said at the beginning, 99.9% um, .9 of the time, the only upset, upset, the only exception to that would be is if I were to use the original cover and the original timing uh, or the original cover and the original harmonic balancer, but I would still want to do it because this this engine is a, what did I say it was before? It's a 76 from 1976. So this engine is almost 50 years old, okay? And if I use the original timing cover and the original harmonic balancer, there's a possibility that that balancer may have slipped on that rubber ring. So you always want to put your piston at top dead center, put your timing cover in place temporarily. You don't have to put gaskets on it. Matter of fact, there isn't even a timing chain on here. There's nothing here. I don't have a camshaft or nothing here. All I got is the pistons and the crank crankshaft in there. So you want to assemble it temporarily, slide your harmonic balancer over the crankshaft, and then verify that your timing marks still line up. Because if they don't, you've got a slipped balancer, or if you've got new parts, you've got the wrong new parts. So it just all depends. And I'm, I'm sure Ford and Chrysler's the same way. I'm sure they have the same problems. You know, so really it doesn't matter. Whatever engine you're building, you always want to double check this before you start assembling everything because once you get the he cylinder head on here, it's really hard to tell when this piston is at top dead center. But if I do it with, without the cylinder heads on here, I can turn the crankshaft, I can watch the piston, I can, you know, lay my finger down here on the, on the, on the deck, and I can feel the piston, and I can feel when it stops moving. And at that, at that point in time, I know it's a top dead center. Now, you may put your balancer on there, and it may be two degrees off. It may be two degrees on this side, or maybe two degrees on that side. If it's that close, you're probably fine, because unless you use a dial indicator, you're never going to get your your piston at exactly top dead center. It might be a little bit, and, and once it reaches top dead center, you got to understand, once that rod, that, that crank throw re goes all the way up to, to the top dead center point, there's a little bit of, of movement in there where it's going to stay at top dead center, a few degrees of movement. So this is going to be a little bit off maybe, but if you put it on and you're like way up here or way down there, you know you got a problem. If it's you know over here, then you've got a real problem. So you just want to check it with the cylinder heads off, you know, eyeball it, use your hand to feel it with, make sure it's really close to top dead center, and then put your balancer on and check it to make sure that they both still line up. It'll save you a ton of heartache because if that's off and you go, you put this motor all together and you assemble it and it won't start or it starts and it runs like crap and you're, and you're trying to turn the timing and your timing marks, you know, are, are in the right place but it still runs like crap, it might be because your balancer's bad. And if it is, you'll never figure it out until you pull the balancer off and put another one on there. So, or you take, you know, a new one and compare it to the old one and you oh, see, oh, it's, it's moved because they it, it, it can move. Okay. So that's just a little tip to help you guys when you're building an engine for the first time. It's just a good idea to do that. These obviously, these are brand new parts, so they should line up, but I still assemble them anyhow, just to be sure I bought the correct stuff. Because if I don't, and this balancer, you know, had a mark mark up here when this was the top dead center. Then I, I I could start this try to start this engine up, and I'd be trying to time it down here where it should be timed up here. So it's always a good idea to check it. Whether it's new parts or old parts, you should always check it. All right, guys. I hope that helps somebody. It's just something simple to do. It doesn't take but five minutes. You know, before you start putting the heads on, I'm, I'm going to put these heads on here. Start putting this thing together. Rest away tomorrow. I have pretty much all the parts I need now, so we're going to start putting it together. And I'm going to start working on this frame, too, and getting it ready to go. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again for subscribing. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.